All right, so you're gonna need a bench or a couch, something that um, for us to start, you can put your legs up. So we're gonna start off with a really flat back. You're gonna lie back down. I'm embarrassed now about my mismatch socks, so we're gonna throw these off. <laughs> you're gonna lie down and then take your legs, hips as close to the end of the surface, and then let yourself come up like this. You can also use the couch so you can hang out here, just finding any old surface that you can put your feet up. Notice that my legs are kind of at like a nice 90 degree angle. And as everyone's kind of coming in and getting sorted and doing stuff and figuring out a place to like where they're going to lie down and where they're going to keep their feet up, do your thing. And eventually, once you do get settled, I want you to take an inventory from head all the way down to your toes. So first with my head, I'm gonna drop my chin. I'm gonna try not to look back and over arch and through my neck, but I'm gonna chin tuck a little, drop things down and lengthen my cervical spine. And then as I travel down, I wanna find this moment of kind of pinning my shoulder blades down my pockets. And notice that when I do that, my back arches a lot. So make sure that once you've done that, you kind of relax the upper back and the spine all the way down. So hopefully uh, the entirety of our back is making contact with the floor. And then from there, you travel down to your low back and do a few little hip sways side to side. So if I were to show you this way, I just kind of, dig my heels into that couch and let my hips kind of rock. And again, I'm just kind of like gaining inventory, seeing where I'm at, bringing a sense of awareness into each and every part of my head. And then once we get to the hips, I want you to first make sure that your uh, hips are heavy, that your back is flat, and that you're not on a surface that you feel like you need to um, like hold on and tense up. You really want to feel that relaxation. And then I uh, feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions as we go through, but otherwise start here, feet above your heart, close your eyes, taking a big deep breath in from the crown of the head all the way down to your hip crease. Let your belly rise and rise and rise and rise and pause at the top when you're at capacity. And then exhale, let it go. And do that a couple times. Just try to like stop. Try to stop the monkey mind and get out of that fight or flight, frantic breathing. Let's try to lengthen the inhale, make it last a second or two longer. Hold at the top and lengthen the exhale. Just start to feel things calming down. That if you could go through your body and like turn off the switches, you know, like you got this house and all the lights are on and you're just going through room by room, turning off as many light switches as you can. Let your calves feel heavy on the surface. And then invite a little bit of movement in through the feet. Just pull your toes back towards you and feel that, dor feel that dorsiflexion in through the ankles. And then point. Really try to really point. And then flex. And then let's do full circle. So I bring the toes in towards me. I wrap them around and find maybe three or four circles going from uh, going in opposite directions. And then just switch it and find circles going inward. And then take a moment and reach your arms back behind you. Imagine that you like just woke up and rolled out of bed and it's your first good yawn. And then hold on for one wrist and reach into the opposite corner. And then hold on to the other wrist and reach.
reach over to the other side. And then bring yourself down into now goal post arms. So I basically have a, a bunch of 90 degree angles. So there's a 90 degree angle between my forearm and my bicep. There's a 90 degree angle between my hips, uh, my low back and my hip. And there's a 90 degree angle between my um, leg and my shin. Yeah. Take an inhale. And then exhale, start to push your air out. Hissing your exhale, like you're exhaling through a straw, pushing the air out of you, getting six pack abs at the bottom. Inhale, relax. And then exhale, we just apply it. I let every inhale fill me up with space. And then use my exhale to remind me what core strength should feel like. It's not complicated, it's not tense, it's not me lifting my neck up or rolling my shoulders. It's simply the action of exhaling my air so forcefully that my ribs sew down to my hips. So just get aware of that. Three more breaths, inhale, full space, no tension. And exhale, your ribs pull down, belly button pushes into the floor. No tension through the hip flexors, so I'm not like tensing up. I'm directing all of the energy and power that I need from rib to hip. Total peace everywhere else. One more for me, inhale. And exhale. And then now we're gonna add the roll of our upper body and going overhead. So first I wanna start off with our external rotators. Those are our little armpit muscles that wrap around, you know, that uh, rotator cuff that wraps all the way around you and allows you to do this, right? So we're gonna set that up by taking a big deep breath in. And then exhale as I push my core down, I'm gonna lift my elbows up. So shh. Wrists still pushing into the floor, elbows lifting up. You should feel a little bit of activation now from tricep um, to lat. Inhale, relax. Exhale, no, nothing through the hips yet, just core and lats. No tension pushing into the surface, nothing through the legs. Inhale, relax. Exhale, elbows lift up and the hands push down. And you're training external rotation without any uh, back arching, right? So I'm keeping myself here, I'm letting gravity help me out, and I'm just working on that, rotating those elbows, firing up my armpits. You can do it several times without your inhales and exhales. It's just nice to kind of load everything, sink it all up, inhale, and exhale. Eventually, we're gonna start to press overhead. And if you're in my overhead mobility, uh, like next four weeks uh, sequence, I asked you to send me a wall slide. This is like the passive version of the wall slide with a floor slide. So I take in a big deep breath in. And then exhale, I shh, push my ribs down. I think about the uh, uh, elbows lifting up slightly. And then I keep my wrists onto the floor as I press all the way up overhead without any rib flare, without any back arching, without your hands coming up. And notice if you can keep your hands on the floor or if you start to get here and then things are funky or if you start having any pain as you pass overhead, notice all those things. As you press, inhale. As you press, exhale, I want you to feel your shoulders lock down as your arms press up. So you feel like you have a rubber band being pulled in both directions. So shoulders down. As you press, close arms to extension. Yeah, just practice that a few times. You can be really active with it. We're gonna get into some, uh, you know, deeper stretching later. So I want to make sure that you're really warm. Hence all the, you know, shh, hissing. Um, so you can take moments if you're like, dude, I am warm. I just did all the things. Then maybe you're just gonna explore a little bit of movement, three arms up and back. But if you notice yourself starting to get into these compensations, I highly recommend that you use the solid uh, positioning and then only find the range of motion that you can get with solid core positioning. All right. I hope that was fun. <laughs> 
From here, it's gonna turn into full snow angel. So again, I haven't incorporated my legs yet. I want my legs to feel like just like totally flopped out, nothing, no tension, nothing through the hip flexors, nothing through the hamstrings or glutes. I am soft, they are off. And then I'm gonna bring my heart, uh, hands down. I'm gonna take in a big deep breath in. Exhale, I'm gonna push my core down and reach my fingertips towards the surface. Imagine this is like spirit fingers, so you have a lot of energy through the arm, reaching in both directions as your shoulders come down, your arms come up. And then notice I came this way so you guys can see my full snow angel, you can see kind of where my limitations are, that my right shoulder is a lot tighter than my left shoulder. And so as I come here, as I come down, okay, everything's on the floor, on the floor, on the floor, and then as soon as I get to about my Y, my like snatch grip, things start to get really tight. I can feel it kind of pulling in through my pec. So as I come forward, 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 this is where my snow angel needs to be. Because if I'm down here, then I feel a lot of kind of impingement at the top of the shoulder girdle. So that's where I'm at today. A few times, inhale, exhale, shh. As you do more and more, you may start to feel yourself loosen up. All right, one more. All right, we're ready to add the legs. But I want us to be really careful that we're not just cueing on to hip flexion. I never want you to feel like you're bringing your knees up into your chest, turning on your quads and your hip flexors. All of this energy is going to be down and into the floor, like away from you, down and into the floor, almost like a circle, right? So the circle doesn't come like this way of tension. The circle goes that way. So I'm here. I take a big deep breath in. I'm going to leave my arms just chilling, whatever you want to do for now, taking in and out. And then exhale, shh, same core setup. And then I just want to dig my heels or my calves into the surface. So I start to feel some calf to hamstring engagement and then some hamstring to butt engagement. There should be no back arching. There should be no lifting of the low back. So shh, keep that down and just turn on your hamstrings. No tension through the hip flexors. Maybe even hold on so you can feel like, hey, are you putty? Are you soft like you should be? All right, inhale. Exhale, core, shh, and then hamstrings. Again, this isn't a hip bridge, so you're not lifting up. You wanna feel like your heel is being pulled to your butt, and that's the action. Inhale, and exhale, shh. Couple more, inhale. Check in on your hip flexors. My right hip flexor is doing okay, but my left hip flexor keeps wanting to engage. Probably has something to do with my left weak hamstring. Taking a big deep breath. Exhale, shh, core set up, and then heel drive. It should be lazy. Like this should not be considered like exercise. It is body awareness. It's using your breath to shh, create the necessary stabilization that you. So you shouldn't be like really tensing up everything. Just go in with curiosity. See what kind of engages. It's really easy for me to engage my calf to hamstring connection, but sometimes it's hard for me to make that correlation to my glute. So I pull, squeezing, 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 heel to my butt until I can really feel that hamstring uh, to glute drive and then relax. All right, if you're ready to put it all together, I take in a big deep breath in. And then exhale, shh, my core goes. So I'm moving from core to extremity as I reach my arms back, digging my heels down into the ground. I wanna feel like the only thing that's tight in my anterior chain is my rib to hip connection. So it's not my hip flexors and my psoas that's doing this work. I'm not pulling my knees up. I'm pushing down, shh, pushing down, and then reaching back behind you. Let's do that a couple times, inhale. Exhale. Exhale. You can try different angles too. Sometimes reaching your arms out to a Y or trying to get really narrow will change things. Just, you know, try things out. 
one more. You're going to bring your knees up into your chest. Try to bring them past the surface and just hold them in there. Taking a big deep breath in where you feel your belly pushing against your thighs for three, three two, one. And exhale. Shh. Bring your knees in tighter. Do that one more time. Inhale. Exhale. Shh. All right. We're gonna turn this into a window rotation. So I'm gonna bring, curl myself up, I'm in the fetal position and I'm rolling like a roly poly oly ball, yeah? I'm gonna roll on over to my right side. I'm still tucked up in the fetal position, thinking about stacking hip, a left hip on top of my right, left knee on top of my right. And then I'm gonna find some rotation. So I'm gonna reach over towards you with my left arm. I'm gonna reach for you. And then I'm gonna reach up and overhead. I'm gonna pause here and think about space between my uh, hips going that way and my arm going that way. And then I'll exhale and fall into that twist. Inhale, I'm gonna reach back forward, go slow with it. Pausing at the top and then exhaling. One more. You're gonna walk your feet back up. You're gonna just drop them off over to the other side. Fetal position to start. And here, I'm gonna reach my right arm over. I'm gonna glide it on up. I'm gonna pause here and think, not that I wanna be tight and crunched up through the side, but I want my hip to push towards this bench, reaching in both directions, and then exhaling into your twist. It's up to you either arm straight or elbow bent. Inhale. And exhale. One more. Okay, you're gonna slowly bring yourself back onto your surface, elevating your legs up on something. And then we're gonna um, now open up the back of the hamstring. You're just gonna bring your right knee into your chest, interlace your finger back behind you, and then start to work on some uh, bending and extending. So inhale, I'm gonna bend the knee into my chest. And then exhale, I'm gonna kick my heel up to the sky. Notice that I'm dorsiflexing my foot, kicking my heel up, but I'm not locking out my knee. So I'm gonna keep my hand right behind my knee so that way I keep a little baby bent. Every inhale, I bring the knee in. And every exhale, shh. Couple times. If it feels easy, you can bring the knee in and then instead of kicking heel up to the sky, the heel kicks back towards your face. Inhale. Exhale. So, you're flexing that foot, pulling the toes back towards you. Okay, last one, and then you're gonna hold here. If this feels pretty good, then you're gonna walk your hands up your leg. Otherwise, just keep your hands back there. I'm gonna go from a dorsiflex foot now to a point. Really trying to get my big toe to touch the ceiling. Big breath. Exhale, maybe try to pull it in. Notice if you're holding on with the left hip flexor, do everything you can to try to relax this leg. Inhale. Exhale, one more. I'm gonna take this ankle, you're gonna place it on top of the thigh, and then we're gonna play around with you just pushing your knee out and then pulling your knee in. So do that a few times. If you feel some tension around the outside of the knee, flex this foot, that should take care of it. Otherwise, let me know, we'll find something else to do. And 
then hang tight here and then think about now bending this left knee in tighter towards your chest. And maybe even interlacing your fingers behind the left knee now. Try not to let your hips curl up like this, up off the ground. You wanna make sure you're on the ground so you're not going too far. You're just finding the last little bit of kind of like attachment of the glute knee as it attaches to the top of the hip crease and then fans around the under glute and the hamstring. So big breath. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. You're actually going to stay here in this position. You can relax this leg. You're going to hold on to the ankle. And then I'm going to try to drop the knee to the ground. And then I'm going to try to pull the knee across my body all the way over. Notice my hip stays on the ground. So I'm using my hands to guide that knee deeper to the ground. Imagine like you want to go into a half happy baby, but you're not going to, you're not going to. And then just rocking it back, keeping the hip down on the ground and just flossing that femur in external rotation. Back and through. I'll show you from the here. So you can kind of see my knee. I rock the knee to the right. The foot stays right in line with the knee. I'm not trying to get into the happy baby. I just keep it right here. This leg is doing nothing. And then I try to cross the knee over my body. Hopefully it ends in my belly button while keeping the hip down. One more. And then from here, you're gonna rest in this kind of pretzel position. So instead of ankle on top of the knee, now you'll have knee on top of the knee. And then take this moment first to try to take this uh, left leg and bring it off to the right. So notice that I went from kind of crossing my legs to now spreading my feet apart from one another. If I can, I'm going to hold, I'm going to bring my knees into my chest. And I'm going to hold onto my shins or my ankles. So I can hold onto my right ankle, but I can't quite hold on to my left unless my head comes up off the ground and I'm uncomfortable. So do your best to hold on to what you can and then shh. Pull the knees into your chest deeper. Here you should find kind of like, again, glute knee, upper hip capsule, maybe a little bit of TFL, that kind of lateral hip capsule, and then you may even feel a little bit of like groin or like deep hip. It kind of depends on what your structures are like. So again, I'm trying to grab onto the ankles, but I won't get the right, so I'm just gonna hold onto the shin. Maybe even use the surface to kind of push into. My hip stays on the ground. If I notice I'm starting to tuck, then I go a little bit uh, less. Inhale. And exhale. One more. Okay. We're going to get back into those windmill twists, but you're going to now do it with the knees crossed on top of one another. So I'm gonna keep my right knee crossed on top of my left. I'm gonna start to teeter-totter over onto my side. Again, left, right knee on top of the left. And then I take my right arm, I reach it over. We'll do it three times. Back and around. After the third, just hang tight there for a second. Don't go anywhere. Let things relax. Let your head drop. And your jaw soften. When you're ready, you'll help your legs out. Maybe pick them up, bring them back onto the wall. And then we start on the other side. It starts off with just the thread, the needle external rotation figure four. So I'm going to um, come on down. I'm going to take my left, right, left ankle on top of my right, and then I'm going to start to push forward and away. 
So go here, ankle on top. I'm gonna push my knee in, out, away from, uh, away from me and towards the bench, and then pull it in. I'm dorsiflexing this foot, pulling the toes back towards me. warming up this reclining pigeon and then we're going to deepen it just by taking this knee bending it deeper and maybe interlacing the fingers behind uh, this thigh. Take an inhale and every exhale try to relax something. Try not to fight to stretch. Don't uncomfortably put yourself in positions Put yourself in positions and then teeter-totter back and forth between discomfort and peace. Approaching those areas of discomfort with a relaxed face and jaw. Tell yourself it's gonna be okay. more breaths. And then I'm going to hold on to this ankle and then as you can see I'll relax this right leg. I want to hold on to the ankle and then floss this external rotation from left to right. So I'm going to take my left knee and drop it all the way off to the left. I'm not letting my body rotate so I'm keeping my right hip down on the ground. I want to uh, practice perfect positions, no compensation. And then I cross the knee towards my body. And then over. I'm gonna hold here. I'm gonna bend this right knee, pulling it in. Now I have knee stacked on top of the knee. I'm trying to grab on for the top ankle and then spread the feet away from one another. Maybe I can grab onto the other ankle, but in my case, I'm just gonna hold on to the top of the knee and then let that be enough. On this side, my left hip keeps wanting to creep up off to the left. So I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to actively push my hip away from me. Try to keep the hip square, not letting myself sway. Couple more breaths. One more, and then as you know, from here we go into the twist. So I'm gonna let, keep my legs in this kind of pretzel. I'm gonna drop myself onto my right, uh, my right side. Inhale, I'm gonna reach over and then back. Exhale. Shh. Pause in the third one and relax into the twist. And then from here, you're going to roll yourself on over. Find a quick cat cow in tabletop position. So I'm here and I'm just going to lift up, let my head tilt up, pull my shoulder blades down my back, tilt my hips up. And then round out. Right. 
So we're going to come on up. We're going to head back to um, focusing on our shoulders for a little bit, and then we'll keep kind of teeter-tottering back and forth, back and forth, because you need a little bit of everything. Um, so I'm going to uh, sit on the tops of my feet, and for the record, if this sucks, then you should, like, put this on, like, put a reminder on your phone every, like, four hours to sit on the tops of your feet for a couple minutes and open those babies up. Um, if this uh, feels fine, but then conversely, like, maybe this sucks, then maybe practice this, but give yourself some energy to uh, full plantar flexion, dorsal flexion, plantar fascia stretch, all that kind of stuff. So I'm here. And then, or... And first, I'm just going to remind myself what those levers are, what I'm trying to train. So if I want to open up my overhead mobility or, like, get rid of tension that just, like, creeps up at the top of the shoulder, I want to put that tension or energy somewhere else. So in this case, I want to find tricep to lat connection. If your triceps are really sore, I really want you to work on the rotation aspect to find that activation in through your armpit. So it's going to look like this. Hands onto um, the bench. I take in a big deep breath in. And then exhale, hands are gonna push down into the bench. My, and I'm gonna sh rotate my elbow pits up to the sky. So really simple exercise and relax. So notice I'm not rounding and reaching. I'm not like making the exercise really complicated. You just wanna feel the connection, the lights turn it on, and then off. Switch on, switch on. And here, and exhale. Sh my core pulls down, my head lifts up, my chest puffs, but it's not at the expense of like overarching through my spine, right? Inhale. And exhale. One more, inhale. And exhale. Okay, now we're gonna do that in a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna come on down. Again, my head is still above my body. So if you have a hard time with overhead stuff, I really want you to take this like rungs on a ladder as opposed to just going straight in. So I'm here, my head is still above my body. I'm not bicep in line with my ear. I take in a big deep breath in. And then exhale. I push my hands in. I rotate. So I'm not just pushing down and leaving my rotators out. Notice my elbow pit rotates over. So I feel that rotation into my arm. It's not just my triceps moving, yeah? Inhale, and exhale. Ribs pull down. And then if this feels really easy, let's start to go a little more overhead. So I'm gonna go just uh, before bicep in line with the ear. I'm gonna pause right here. I take in a big deep breath in. Long through the rest of my spine. Inhale, and then exhale. Rotation. Pushing down, lat string, notice if there's any pain, impingement. And then inhale. And exhale. And if you feel like you're ready for full overhead, you'll let yourself come down. Notice if you can maintain this position without your shoulders rolling forward or your back arching a ton. Like if you can stay neutral and go in bicep in line with the ear, great. My hands, by the way, are directly in line with my shoulder. I'm not too far out, not too far in, so just kind of get that for reference. And then in overhead position, I take it a big deep breath in. Exhale, shh. Can I find that same control and support? It's almost like being on a pull-up bar and like setting up for that leg raise or that toes to bar. It's like, what are those muscles that engage? Okay, inhale. And exhale, shh. Wherever you've landed, so wherever your like place of most resistance is, maybe it's here, maybe it's here, maybe it's here, maybe it's here, wherever it is. Now I want you to play around with a really wide grip. So go if you can. If you're using a chair, I apologize. But if you have something wider like a couch, then go a little wider. And then now I really want to find the line from my pinky rolling all the way through. So I want to imagine like I'm doing this, but not actually moving my hands. Yeah, so my hands place onto the bench. I'm going to hang out right at that end range, and then inhale. Exhale, I dig my pinkies into the bench, rotate my elbow pits up to the sky, locking my armpits in, and really creating a lot of stability in this position. Every inhale, I relax, and I'm gonna let myself sink in a little bit deeper into the stretch, because that feels good. And then every exhale, I sh press in. I find that lever strength. I rotate my elbow pits up to the sky. That's probably my hardest cue that I always have to remind myself. 
I'm good at pushing. I'm just part of the rotating and the support. Shh. Elbow kicks up. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to go into a very narrow grip. So imagine one hand on top of the other, like you're swimming. Left hand and then right hand. Hang out here or hang out here, wherever you can. Big deep breath in. And then exhale, same deal. Can you pull the shoulders down? Push your hands in and then relax and maybe sink in a little bit deeper. Do that two times. And then switch which hand is on top and do two more. Slide yourself on up. Do a few arm chest bumps back and forth. Just get some blood flow in there. Free movement. How are we doing? Does that feel good? A little thumbs up. Any tension, pain, impingement? No? Moving on. Okay, so now we're going to do that but specific to the triceps. So we're going to bend the elbows. So I'm going to come on up and for the purposes of this, I'm going to go through the whole sequence again. But if you're like, oh, I ain't got time for this. I want to go right to it. You can kind of skip a little bit faster if your shoulders are feeling good. So now I'm going to come in through here and my knuckles are touching one another. Elbows are touching one another. Oh, knuckles touching one another. Elbows touching one another. And then from this position, I just want to focus on pulling my elbows or pulling my, uh, keeping my elbows together, but pulling my fists away from one another. So I'm here from this angle, I'm here, and then I shh, try to pull away from one another. Let's just practice that a few times. So I'm here, there's, I'm head totally over, I'm not all the way down, but I'm here, and then shh, I rotate away from one another. Shh. Here you should really feel that wrap around and rotation through the armpit, securing in there. You may feel a lot of tension kind of pulling at the underpecs and creeping up and back. So notice those things. And then once you start to feel good, I want to keep my elbows together. So always people get into this and then their elbows by the time are far apart and their hands are close and it's like totally good. So only go as far as you can go while still maintaining elbows um, to get uh, like close together. And then I'm going to come down here again. I'm not still, I'm not quite bicep in line with the ear yet. I just want to play around. Inhale, exhale. So my elbows push down. So I still have that lever. My shoulders pull down my back and I roll away at the same time. Notice as I do it, I start to sink into a little bit more every time I relax. All right, hang tight here. I'll extend your arms, but keep your elbows onto the bench. Widen them out so they're now uh, shoulder, uh, like in line with your shoulder. And then you can either keep your forehead on the bench or you can come down below it. Keep the palms up to the sky for now. Taking a big deep breath in. Exhale, soften. And then one arm at a time, I'm gonna bend this elbow. I'm gonna tap it onto my shoulder. I'm gonna reposition because my elbow flared out. And then I'm gonna go. I'm not even gonna switch sides. I'm just gonna do five on the right side before I even think about switching to the left. Really focusing on that rotation. Can my elbow pit face all the way over towards you? Can I get that much rotation? And then I'll do it on the other side. So I'm going to set it up just because I know my left side is like my trouble side. <laughs> so I, can, um, I have to get it in line before we can start. I'm going to kind of make sure that that elbow pit's rolling up and back. For now, I'm going to let my head rest on my fist so I'm not quite in a full range. And then I bend and extend, keeping the hand to the outside of the shoulder. So I don't want to end up in this position where I'm crossing and going to the opposite shoulder. I want my hand to go to the outside of my shoulder and then tap onto the outside. All right, we're on the left. You can use the other hand to help the bend and extend, keep it in line. Eventually, you may get the motor control pattern to do it on your own without the elbows flaring out. 
and then both arms at the same time. Go ahead and uh, let go on for prayer arms. Bend the elbows. Push the hand, uh, fingertips into one another to get a little bit of space. Maybe let your head sink down a little bit deeper. Maybe play around with a 90 degree angle or deepening it and finding more stretch through the tricep and armpit. A couple big deep breaths here. Is there a modification if you can't do that? Oh, yeah. So you should be here, both elbows here, and then resting here, or resting here, or resting here. So anywhere not bicep in line with the ear. So from, you know, either here, 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 or all the way. Thank you. Um, you can also do the same thing, but without the elbow bend. If it's the triceps that are just like seizing up and can't do it and it impinges the shoulder too much, then keep the elbow straight and then just uh, stay right in through here. Okay. And then look 30 days from now after pack skills overhead mobility and then you'll be like, <laughs> all right, you're hanging out here and then let's add some lateral flexion, some leaning in through the lats. So I'm gonna just take my hands and reach them as far over to the right as I can actively pull my hips away and drop myself down. Again, if this hurts the top of the shoulder, then keep yourself up. It's about stretching the lat. It's not about stressing out the shoulder. And then walk it back in through the center and over to the left. Again, I may just stay upright and then pull myself away. I don't have to come all the way down and um, put some pressure on that top of the shoulder girl. Bring yourself down. We're gonna press into a downward facing dog where your hands are on the bench or couch, whatever you have. So just uncurl the toes and then let your hips come up. Press your heels down, maybe a little bend in the knees. Actually, let's all start with a little bend in the knees. And then if you wanna play around, you can keep the knees bent and just think about tilting the hips up and tucking them under. Tilting them up, tucking them under. And now watch me for a couple times, zero in on my hips right now. You don't see a lot of movement, right? So I'm not like rah, and rah, rah. It's trying to really just isolate that posterior and anterior tilt to the pelvis without letting it kind of get into the rest of your spine. So explore that. Again, you're here, your hands, your head can be up and you're exploring it so that way you're not in an overhead position or if you're comfortable, you can let yourself combine the two. So again, very unsatisfying, subtle movements that impress nobody, but teach you a lot about hip control. Pause here, push your hands into the bench to get some support, and then take your right leg as far over to the, or sorry, take your left leg as far over to the right as you possibly can. So you should feel a big stretch from the heel all the way up to the bullseye of that butt cheek. Hang tight here for three, for two, and one. And then come back and through the center. And then take the right ankle behind, dig the heel, it's, uh, uh, right, dig the left heel down. And you're taking that right leg as far over as you can without this foot coming up off the ground. So big toe, pinky toe, heel, presses down, and then leaning over, using the bench if you need to for support. You can also have fingertips to the floor, so you don't have to combine the overhead positioning. You can always be uh, just like this. Bringing yourself back. We're going to find a hand, uh, pyramid pose, so just take your right foot forward, and then notice my hands came up a little, or my shoulders kind of came up, so they're right on top of my hands. And then I'm going to square off into my hips. I'm going to dig that right heel down, lift all my five toes up, and then I'm going to windshield wiper that hamstring from side to side. Dig that heel down. I'm going to square up again. Push my left hand into the bench and then roll your right arm up to a sky. So feel that full line, but 
but now combining the hinge of the hips and the rotation of the upper back. Beautiful. Oh, I like what I'm seeing, guys. Great, let's find the triangle pose. So if you wanna just go right into it, go for it. Otherwise, look at me. Right hand is down. I'm gonna take this back foot, line it up so it is in line with his front heel. And then my right hand is gonna stay down. I'm gonna pin my left shoulder on top of my right shoulder and then take my arm up to the sky. So I should feel a lot of length through this side. Arm up to the sky, or hands to the hips, fine. Bring yourself back and just simply switch sides. So take your left foot forward and your right foot back. And then square yourself off first. Find a position that feels good. Your back's real flat. And then dig the heel down and windshield wiper that hamstring from side to side. And we'll find that a few times. I'm gonna place it down, add the rotation. Right hand pushes into the bench. My body stays square as I reach my left arm up and back. I glide it on out from there to find triangle pose. Taking this right foot, spinning it back flat. Play around with some space, like, you know, it doesn't have to be like, keep your legs exactly there. Move around, see what feels good. Think about your hips pulling to the right, so you're kind of shooting out into this right corner. Left hand stays down, right arm travels up to the sky, feeling that space through here. You're not rotating, and then just the arm goes. Your whole body stacks on top of itself, and you find that open. From here, you'll find a wide-legged forward fold. Just take this left foot, pin it down forward. Hands come in between your legs. Head drops heavy. Round out. Shake things about. You're going to pause here, and then you have choices. You can either turn this into a regular straddle. That would look like this. I'm just gonna simply come down, bending this knee into a child's pose and then extending this leg out to the side. So this is option number one. Option number two would be this, but then sending the right leg off to the right. So you add a little bit more. And option number three would be using your surface. So I'm gonna come up a little. I'm gonna take my foot, place it onto the couch or the bed or the chair or whatever it is that you have. And then I'm gonna play around with sending my hip back and then maybe coming down. Head drops heavy. Try to relax into this. Last couple breaths. Okay, so you're not gonna come out entirely. You're gonna turn this into a couch stretch. So I'm gonna cut, bring my hands up and bring my hips up a little. And then I'm just gonna bend this back knee so I can bring myself into this position. Yeah, if you were on the floor, that's fine. Now just roll yourself into the back heel or the top of the foot's resting against. And then it's up to you, you can either hang out in this position and just work on hip extension here, or hip extension here and finding that stretch. So if that, this feels like enough, awesome. If you want more, take this foot, bring it forward, and then notice what happens. So right now, my hip is back. I'm not quite in hip extension. So I'm gonna think about pressing my hips forward. I want one straight line from my head to my shoulders, to my back hip, to my back knee. And as I press my hip forward, I may even squeeze my back butt cheek a little bit so I can find a little bit more hip extension. Good 
This feels pretty good. We're going to add the rotation and maybe grab onto the back of the foot. So my left hand stays down, maybe moves to the center. Right arm travels up to the sky. Inhale. Exhale, if it feels easy, grab onto the back of the foot. If it stresses you out, don't worry about it. Breathe. Slowly glide yourself out. Maybe bring your hands all the way on top of your hips. Again, if you're here, not quite open, then that's not good. And if you're here and upper but and like back really arched, that's not good either. You want to think about ear on top of shoulder, shh, on top of ribs, shh, on top of hip, on top of back. Hang out here for three. Maybe taking this left arm up to the sky and over for two. For one. Ooh. Okay, take a little reset, do whatever you need. If you remember, we have start off in the side straddle, uh, this time on the right side. So I'm gonna either hang out like here and then extend my right leg off to the side and then come on down. You can do that um, also, but letting this right knee come off to the side so there's a little bit more stretch through the groin. And then if you wanted more, you're here, you start with your hip on top of your knee so you can kind of like tabletop control it. And then from there, you're just going to think about sending your hips back. Slowly bringing the arm down. And finding some peace. Don't let this be hard. Don't try to force yourself into a place that feels really uncomfortable. We're already forced into a place that feels uncomfortable. <laughs> See if you can let this feel easy, peaceful. Couple more breaths. And here, as you know, it turns into your couch stretch. So whatever variation you have, you'll just make sure now that you kind of start like this, with the knee and the hip right there, and then kind of get some inventory and see if you want to take things a step further and take this hand or this foot forward. Again, notice if you're not in hip extension and use the next few breaths to press your hip forward and to try to get one straight line from your head all the way down to your back. The right hand is going to stay down. I'm going to push into the ground. I'm going to think about stacking my left shoulder on top of my right as I reach my arm up and maybe grabbing on to the back foot. Slowly ease on out from there. Maybe taking it to the full expression where your short head is on top of your shoulders, on top of your hip, on top of your back knee. But you know, keep the legs and tuck it under. That's right there. Maybe take the start arm up to the sky. Reach it up and down. Back and through the center, and slowly come on out from here. And then we're going to turn this into a chest extension. So on the corner of uh, probably your bed's the best way to do it, like kitty corner. That way your arms can extend back behind you. I'm going to show you just like this, starting first on my back, 
back is flat. I'm resting my feet up on here so my back's not arching, so I'm here. I'm gonna start off with nice ballerina arms. A little soft bend in the knees. I'm gonna puff my chest up, pull my shoulder blades down my back, and then let my arms come down. Think pinky up to the sky. Pause here, letting your ribs soften and your chest soften. Taking a ton of breath across your chest. Feel each and every one of your ribs opening up. And letting your arms sink down deeper. A wise man once said, a chest bump a day keeps the hunchback away. And I've been living by that mantra ever since. Let yourself spend time with arms and shoulders behind your body. But you're not rolling forward and looking down at your cell phone, but your chest is open, neck is in line, pinkies rotated up. And then total freedom across your chest cavity. I'm going to start to explore some either elbows bending, internal, external rotation. Just revisiting that kind of floor slide sequence that we were doing, but now arms are behind our body. Gravity's weighing them down. Maybe a few snow angels with arms extended. Thank yourself for taking the time for carving it out. Your body appreciates it and so do I. And as always, it is an honor and a privilege. Namaste. Yay! You can all be unmuted now. <laughs> Unmute all. Thanks, Emily. Of course, you got it. Love y'all. Happy Sunday. Thank you. Thank you.